You want to get in the middle? Hey, everybody, welcome back. Again, Culture Taft here at Red Light, Red Light here on Saturday. What's the date today? Saturday the 6th, August 6th. Uh, come on down right now if you're still here. We're still drinking. It's, you know, it's uh, Red Light, Red Light. So what else are you going to do here other than have a good time and have a couple beers with some good friends? Again, here with Artborn Magazine, Issue 2 Release Party. Got a couple special guests with us here. Jonathan UB, founder of Artborn Magazine, and Mark Lark, uh, featured in this issue. Um, we're going to start with Jonathan real quick. So, uh, Issue 2 Release Party here. Artborn Magazine had its first release in uh, June, correct? July. July. And uh, you started this, um, basically came to fruition in April. Uh, tell us a little bit about where our porn came from and why you started it. Uh, I've always been a, a very big fan of uh, Juxtapose, uh, Art Forum, Art Papers, all these really uh, wonderful writings of, of the arts, uh, internationally, nationally, uh, however it goes. Um, and to be honest, one night... Uh, I was in bed and I decided um, after a couple beers to go on Instagram and create a Instagram account titled Artborn Magazine. And within a week I had a wonderful team of 13 people working on the magazine um, and that was in the first month alone. Now we're on month two and I'm at 17 people working on this magazine. Uh, Mark Lark here is, uh, he's joined the team as uh, the writer of the architecture. Um, and he takes a perspective that I would not have ever guessed uh, was possible. He doesn't write about the, the actual uh, curves, the perspective. Stylistic side. He writes, yeah, he writes about the human perspective of architecture. Very cool. So, uh, as you guys are mentioning, so you were featuring the article, um, architecture, uh, a, a groovy thing, or a groovier thing. Um, so tell us a little about that. What's your what's your inspiration and in, um, t- uh, what's it like to be featured in Artborn magazine? Oh, it's great. It's amazing. I've actually uh, been researching um, architecture as vernacular in Florida, more specifically black vernacular, um, and also just um, doing a ton of engagement with Paramore, uh, mentoring there. I haven't been in there in a while, unfortunately. But um, yeah, just doing a lot in, in our neighborhoods and just doing a ton of reading on um, marginalized people and their relationship with architecture. I've always felt like, uh, I mean, my background is architecture. That's what I went to school for. But that's always been absent um, in my study of architecture. I didn't really understand why until a little later. So um, I'm interested in just uh, addressing and informing a, um, a different side of architecture. A lot of people know architecture as, as a style, whether it's columns, windows, whether it's uh, a gable. Um, but a lot of people don't understand the elements that actually make architecture. Um, so this article was just really, it was a critique of um, how a neighborhood was designed. Um, but it was also uh, a revelation of how despite um, being marginalized, there was still beauty that came out of it. And, um, and that architecture isn't just a static object, that it's actual livable um, vital space. So uh, that's what that article is about and I hope uh, people learn some new things about it and understand that uh, you know even if you're poor you can still have a rich relationship with the spaces you occupy. Very cool. I think that's one of the biggest uh, uh, things here in Orlando is that you know art has um, been put on this pedestal in many cases and uh, has felt a disconnect to the actual community. Everywhere. But the kind of things that you're doing and that uh, Artborn is starting to do um, is really showcase what, what kind of uh, arts exist in the community and how um, the culture that we live in in itself is an art form. Exactly. And, um, and really understanding kind of what that means uh, both at, for our past and our present but moving forward. So, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to come back to you real quick. Um, what does it mean to have artists uh, like Mark Lark here, people that are from the community, from the local area, showcasing what the art form is for the people that um, you know might not always uh, see between the lines or read between the lines, um, and having people like Mark Lark here, and where is that? What does that mean for art form moving forward um, as far as Orlando's culture is concerned? Right. Uh, I think in a city like Orlando, um, which is trying to grow exponentially in the arts and culture. Uh, is infused with a lot of money. It's 
infused with a lot of uh, upper class uh, elite mindset, which isn't wrong, it's not bad, um, but there's not much room for the common voice. And I think we are presenting that perspective, and it's very important to showcase uh, a voice that doesn't represent money, a voice that represents uh, the common man, common woman, uh, working, putting together beauty, uh, beauty in life, beauty in everything, which is really what all art is about. Uh, so you have these very institutional art organizations and art um, events, which are wonderful, but they need to be counterbalanced with these very organic, ground roots. Um, people and events and that's what we're trying to present we're trying to present that uh, that counterweight to what Orlando has become and I think uh, people like Mark here uh, are helping us grow giving us a voice of the people and not so much the larger organizations I'm very excited about what we're doing here I'm very excited to have Mark on board uh, I, I read I read his article. I, I refuse to read articles until they become published. I don't do any of the editing, any of the uh, sort of read through when when it's in uh, the editing phase. But once it was published and printed, I it was put on my desk and I read through it, and it really stuck with me. Saying gentr uh, gentrification is colonialism in modern day form, and that hit me because that's so true and that's so that's so raw and so many people refuse to understand, acknowledge, and believe that. And I think it's our job to shed light on the truth of modern day living in modern day America and the society that we are involved in. And so I hope that that's what we can continue doing and really just showing that art isn't about pretty pictures. It's about raw, everyday emotions, everyday living, everyday people. And so I, I think this is, this is going to be good. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, very cool. I think um, uh, basically what you guys really touched on and what I think Artborn is offering to Orlando that you would see more in the likes of a New York or an L.A. is that perspective, a different perspective here, not just the traditional um, yeah, institutional organizations that have uh, you know been around for art and culture uh, for everyone um, thus far, but really showing what is brewing here. Orlando's culture, there's something here that you can feel is, is brewing, it's coming up, um, and I think Artborn is really going to fill that gap between uh, uh, the arts and cultural scene that has been established here, um, the new up-and-coming uh, arts and culture scene and finding the in-between, and Artborn is that in-between. So if you like what you heard here, Check out Mark Lark's uh, article here in issue two of Artborn magazine. Jonathan Yubi, you'll see you'll be seeing much more of him. Uh, wait for issue three, but make sure you get a copy of issue two. Got some great stuff and uh, and some perspective is really what we're uh, what we're here talking about tonight. So again, thank you Red Light Red Light for having us here. This is Culture Tap. This is Artborn magazine. Mark Lark, Jonathan Yubi. We'll catch you later. See ya.